listen to past episodes anytime on any device. Search the archives of over 180 episodes. Membership costs $9.95 a month, 33 cents a day. Talk radio at the cutting edge of science and thought. The other side of midnight.com. Okay, here we go. Turn right. Turn left. And welcome back, everyone, to the other side of midnight for this Saturday night, going into about another half hour Sunday morning here in the land of enchantment. My guests this morning are Dr. Rudy Schild and Joe Sorletti, and we're talking about uh, the hearings against the backdrop of how Rudy got into this research. Go straight it, on. It, 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 is it isolating at Harvard that if the subject Keep is going. kind of part of and the common parlance and people are talking about alien, you know, craft and visitations and and uh, probes that you and the only other guy that I know at Harvard that's kind of looking in the same direction are not having any conversations. That's kind of curious. That is a situation. The yes, subject is right. totally off the record and there is no discussion Turn of this. Right. And mind you, Richard, this is a most extraordinary situation of academic censorship of some kind. Get because ready to turn left. when you think about it, it's generally assumed that between 10 and 15 percent, so let's left. adopt 15 percent of the American population has seen a UFO or a loved one Finally, of theirs, we are here. trustworthy informant, has seen a UFO. 15% of our population. That'd be like 40, 50 million people. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking just about the observatory now, where there are 350 PhD scientists working together. 15% of 350 people is of the Five order seven. of 60 or 70 people are probably experiencers, have seen a UFO, and know to never talk about it at the office building. Hmm. Isn't that Very extraordinary? Right. Well, see, this is why I think politically these hearings, even if they don't initially produce anything of interest to those of us that you know kind of follow Get this in some life. depth for the general population to have it them informed that there is an official office Turn in left. the Pentagon now devoted to UFOs and there's a whole bunch of engineers and scientists and military pilots who are willing to come before committees and talk about it on the record I can't help but think, and I'm praying, that that will politically change to where some of these people right. will go, well, maybe I should uh, talk about what I saw last Thursday. Or even better still, Richard, think about which go will be on. the first American university to offer a program and a major in UFO studies. It has to happen eventually. Who will be the first? Will it be Harvard University or will Harvard University be the last? Mm. Um, ready to turn left. Roughly what date did you come to the realization there was more in heaven and earth turn than you dreamed of in your philosophy? Um, I would say that. Um, I had a Lutheran child background, uh, background, and however, by the age of 20, had uh, decided that uh, uh, there was nothing to religion, and um, that my that changed about the time I was working with John Mack, and the abductees were telling 
of having the experience of their being the supreme being or what we were then calling cosmic intelligence right hmm say what let's bring on some of our other folks here <clears throat> ron are you with us uh yes i am okay this is ron gerbron hi there I what? got a generic question for everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah, what... Uh, Get ready to turn left. The, uh, there's in clandestine areas, there, there's something known as the circle of trust, you know, which is kind of self-explanatory. Those are the people that you turn left. can actually talk to. Uh, and I sense that there isn't much uh, in that regard in the uh, halls of Harvard and elsewhere. Because I find it hard to, I think the percentage of people that have had some sort of contact experience is, probably, is much higher than those people just don't talk about it. You know, they, every, a lot of people have something filed away. It's extraordinary if it comes out. So I think they're only counting the ones. Well, I have like unusual experiences. I have no idea how to categorize them. They don't fit into anybody anybody's category I've ever heard of. So I'm kind of sitting here all by myself on a mountain. Rudy, when, when Loeb made news by claiming the Mua Mua was artificial. Didn't that kick off any right. kind of and then discussion, right. debates, acrimony, he's crazy, right. oh, look at that, he found the... In other words, is anybody talking about this other than us crazy? Actually, actually no. Now, be careful here. I'm not that perfectly informed because I don't get to hear everything that happens at Harvard University uh, or everything that happens in the astronomy department at the university. Um, what I do uh, is listen at any opportunity, but there have been virtually none. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to change once it hits the mainstream news. Well, you see, that's why I'm saying who will be the first university, or which will be the first Get university to, uh, to offer a program of study of the UFO question. You know, I'm wondering, we ought to have uh, brought on Barbara Honig. And then continue uh, straight on. Probably too late to try to call her now. But she has done a lot of interesting presentations at the uh, uh, Naval College, and she's somehow associated with uh, Annapolis, I believe. Uh, Naval Institute there. I wonder if they would be the first, or would it be the Air Force, or would it be would it be would it be, would it be, would it be the Space Force? Good for you, Richard. Say again. Uh, good for you, Richard. I didn't think of that, but you are right. Uh, that would be a logical starting place because it is the Navy that stuck its head out and said, "Wait a minute here." We've got Get naval ready. pilots right. that are being harassed by UFOs, and uh, our fleet is being observed and perhaps interfered with Turn by these right. craft, of which we have no power over. And so maybe um, um, uh, they, the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis, Maryland, would be a logical starting point. Well, I always said, even back when when Trump first proposed it, that that. It shouldn't be a space force, we should be a space navy. You know, the analogy with naval ships and certainly submarines long duration, you know, underwater, you know, uh, uh, isolation and all that fits much more the kind of meme of space flight than, you know, Air Force jets. But it's probably just me, you know. Anyway. Well, you're right. In a logical way, I agree with you, Richard, that. Um, it should be the uh, Naval Space Force. Okay, let me go back to, to George while we're waiting. Uh, did, did, did Ron get an answer to his question? Ron, did you get an answer? Uh, not really, except, that, except for when I start talking about anything, I get shut down. I pay people to do that. It makes me look <laughs> Wow. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I would direct people to something that Keith got up. It was a little kerfuffle there. One of my items shows one of the patches that one of the new branches of the Space Force, since you mentioned right. the place, stick right. it in. Um, and uh, I've been cataloging those, and even NASA claims they don't know right. how many there are at this point. It's just been bursting, uh, bursting like a fungus. There's, there's just so many different 
subcategories. They've got big, long, impressive titles. Turn left. And uh, they all got their own patches. And I, I paired one of those up with an ancient Get Egyptian ready. Turn um, right. sculpture. Oh, it's number Hollywood. two. It's Turn the right. owls and the Egypt and, and the Space Force. Oh, my God, look at that. Get ready to yeah, turn right. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's uh, a Delta, Delta Group 13. Turn right. Uh, I think they do electromagnetic work. Don't quote me on that part. I'm still trying to get all the... Yeah, guys, Rudy and, and, and Joe, if you have access to a computer, you want to look at item number two in Ron's section of Radio with Pictures. Exit now. Uh, just click on his name under the banner at the top of the guest page. That'll take you to his section. Look at that. And then, of course, you remember the, the secret society that meets uh, at Bohemian Grove? The owls are a big factor in that. Yeah, Bohemian Grove is just about an hour north of where I am. Uh, and also, there Aha! Of, uh, I've done Get these. Ready to turn uh, there, there's a lot of uh, bizarre parallels with owls. Um, yeah, turn absolutely. Left. And I'm about to take a look at that image, so if you give me a moment, I'll, I'll take a peek. Sure, it's a... Uh, the uh, some of the patches are even wilder, but somehow I thought the owls would come up. It's, according to the uh, uh, according to MoMA, it's one of their catalogs. I get the picture out of the. Uh, uh, it's very very rare for the Egyptians to have depicted an owl. There's a uh, there's a, a hieroglyph that's that's an owl. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, yeah they very uh, they you know they you've seen pictures very nicely done watercolor usually. Strange thing is, Ron, sitting in in Utah where the Utah monolith was at, sitting uh -huh. on a ledge was a sculptor sculpture of a, an owl, and I'm like, see? how did people look at that and can't see that's an owl? It's everywhere. Rudy, in the UFO community, owls have a very special symbolic on. place. Remember what it is? Uh, uh, no, I don't know this, Richard. You're uh, you're the master here. Uh, carry on. Tell me more. Well, wisdom. And if we're dealing with you know owls being kind of um, of, of screen memory creatures for ETs, aliens. I want to separate aliens and ETs. By the way, they're not the same. Um, it seemed to me the attribution of wisdom okay. to the secret Never goings mind. on in Bohemian Grove and you know, a lot of esoteric traditions, and then the conflation. Remember, there's a whole uh, Sub Rosa UFO intelligence group called the Aviary. You knew about no, that? No, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, yes, no, yes. I had no idea. Oh, the intelligence community loves their birds, and I'm beginning to kind of figure out why, I think. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, um, who else do we have with us? We've got, we've got Keith, of course. Um, do we have Andrew? Yes, you do. Mr. Curry. Curry. Okay. Andrew is our resident space artist and illustrator. Route. He actually works from Canada, working on Hollywood projects and commercials and all that good stuff. He has taken a real fancy to artwork given, you know, features on the moon ready. and Mars. Right. And this last week, you sent around a clipping. In fact, if you go back to my items, Turn right. you go to a uh, banner at the top of the guest page, uh, and click on uh, my name, that will take you to my items. Uh, the last item, uh, which is very important, straight is, on. A, is a um, mainstream news story about the Curiosity Martian rover spotting a bizarre doorway on the planet Mars, and I've had Ron, you know, kind of put up some, some comparisons. What do you think of this doorway, Andrew? Well, some people have been saying that Keep pretty good people are articles about it. Uh, by the way, hello everybody, thank you for having me on board. Um, some of the estimates of the size of this doorway is any from um, 18 inches to maybe 3 feet tall. And I know, uh, Richard, you made a comment about, well, it doesn't really matter about the size of the door. It's, it's the, the geometry, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and the and details inside. I mean, obviously, somebody cut through one of these ancient collapsed arcologies in our model. And damn it, Curiosity took this really damaged picture. I mean, they could put out a much better image. They put out the worst possible version 
so people would go, oh, that's just another trick of light and shadow and wander away. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> uh, when I spread that, well, when, I mean, everybody's been doing this whole planet talking about this. It's not just me. Um, and I had asked in our email group, uh, does anybody have a picture, like, on hand of some sort of um, temple that has an entranceway like that? And then Tim Saunders immediately picked up to Cummins' tomb and said, well, it sure looks a lot like the Egyptian masonry used for his tomb. The Valley of the Kings, of course. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, and Andrew, I don't want to stop your flow, but then, uh, just because of that, that's what most of the pictures that, I, that are up in my section are tonight. The, um, uh, it was actually a two, it's at Giza, but it's one of the many, many, many tombs that are all over the place. It's not one that is famous to anybody. It's near the Menkara, apparently. Uh, but it's, uh, the, uh, it looks like the ones you see in movies. You know, okay, the reason, the reason, Rudy, I wanted to bring uh, Ron and, and Andrew on is because part of our discussion, at least here, <clears throat> and I'm going to try the level best we can do to get it at the committee in Washington, we've got to stop excluding the ancient artifacts and technological ruins and buildings and, you know, shards and machines and incredible high-tech, you know, junk that we're seeing all over the Go damn solar on. system on not only the NASA data, but the Chinese data, the and Japanese data, the Russian data itself, both on the moon and Mars. In other words, when did you come to the realization that the UFO cover-up, in fact, included anything beyond the planet right. and current terrestrial total Preoccupation. Um, I'm not sure in that what was the question. When did, I come when did you vision? start thinking of intelligent artifacts on other planets in addition to spaceships and somebody coming to us from either other spatial realms or other dimensions? Um, again, all of this occurred at the time I was working with John Mack. And at that time, I began to meet with some of the abductees uh, in both uh, rather formal and rather informal settings. And I found them to all be very intelligent, uh, communicating very well, and uh, obviously troubled about these uh, particular items in their life. But um, uh, there was nothing unusual uh, per se about them. They were all focused on different parts of the extraterrestrial experience. The different aspects, as I say, include uh, all spontaneous um, clickings on and off of their television set when they happen to be around, or um, seeing footprints of where somebody obviously walked through a closed door, and things of that kind. Uh, uh, they were starting to turn up, and I just had to start paying attention like any normal uh, scientist would. But I didn't get any reinforcement from anybody around me except for John. Hmm. When did the subject of <clears throat> materials, structures, technology, artifacts, machines, whatever, on other planets that NASA was looking at, like the moon and beyond. When did that come up and how did you first become aware that this was a possibility? Actually, um, there's a big uphill battle going on here because I know that you're very close to uh, these various artifacts in the moon on Mars and I think you know that Edgar Vichel was a personal friend. He stayed overnight at my home with my family. Uh, on a few occasions. When he was visiting Boston, he was from MIT as an alma mater. If he was going to give an honorary lecture, he would very often stay with me, and, and I'd take him down to the campus and uh, attend his lecture. So um, uh, I had a lot of time with him, and in one conversation, I remember I asked him, Edgar, you were in the 
lunar orbiter uh, circling around the moon, including the backside that we never get to see. Um, did you ever see any unusual artifacts? And he said, no, Rudy, I never saw anything that was, uh, that was obviously um, not natural to uh, the cratering of the planet, the, the planet Mars and Venus. Uh, and then the moon. Get ready to so up. I have a feeling that Edgar would have said that not only to me, Turn left. but other people who would have been asking him the same question. And I'm afraid that you, Richard, claiming to have found such artifacts, are up against the momentum <laughs> of this, uh, this great hero who was there not having seen them. Now, I took... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got an idea. Joe, did you ever hear the debate that Art Bell arranged between me and Edgar Mitchell about what's on the moon? No, but I heard the one about uh, you and John Lear debating. I have not heard the one of you and Edgar. Well, you should go back. It's probably in some archive somewhere. I haven't looked for it in many, many years. My copy was here somewhere. Uh, March 7th, 1996. Yeah, and it was very interesting because if you listen After carefully round, yeah. to Edgar Mitchell, he never right. outright, uh, you know, Keep uttered right. a lie. In other words, right. he always couched his responses as, as far as I know, right. or, uh, you know, in terms of our briefings or our debriefing. In other words, he never. He never um, acknowledged there was something there. Right. He did accept data that I sent him. He never responded to the data. And my perception is that either politically, because he was military, turn he was right. ba basically ordered never to talk about this, you or more likely, given the, the other evidence that I have, he and the other astronauts literally underwent, shall we say, certain procedures psychologically so that they could not remember what they really saw and experienced? Uh, so I don't know anything about this, this side of Edgar Richard. Uh, I only know of my own personal experiences, but um, he never discussed uh, this topic with me. And except for that, that, that one simple answer to my inquiry. And so I think that uh, as regards his having seen your materials, he probably would have categorized this as, well, it looks like at the 80% um, level, there's probably something there, but the probability isn't high enough that I uh, would commit myself to it being, there about to there being such artifacts mm. in reality. I suspect he takes a position that I do, that I have to be like 98% certain that it's true before I <clears throat> speak about it uh, to other people who expect me to speak with some authority. Well, I can guarantee you sometime in the next few weeks, because <clears throat> I won't overload you, I'm going to send you some images that's going to blow your socks off. Because there's un okay. unequivocal now, evidence. Seen, unequivocal. I have seen, Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted you to know I have seen the images that Joe Cerletti sent to me uh, of the, the face of the moon, the towers, and uh, the pyramid structures, and so on. And um, so I know that part of it and can save you the trouble. Uh, do you have things other than what Joe Cerletti has. I have um, thousands. He does. He, does. <laughs> uh, he has not received the Apollo images of the astronauts with the artifacts yet. Well, was that you, Joe? Yes, that was me. Correct. Okay, and who has not received the, the images yet? Rudy has not seen the Apollo images. Oh, okay. Um, good, okay. He's only seen the faces and the pyramids and the tower and the dome structure. Well, we, we have a very interesting uh, learning curve ahead of all okay, of us. Okay, very good, Richard. <laughs> In fact, uh, I'm okay. going to show you, I'm going to send you images <clears throat> taken by talented amateurs 
from Earth who have photographed these things, but they have no idea what they're looking at. They have literally no conception of what they're looking at. But their data, and these are independent guys, all photographing the same damn thing. So, this will be a very interesting conversation. Okay, we're coming up to the top of the hour. Um, I wanted to talk about the idea of artifacts in the next hour and the UFO hearings and how we get the two together on the same page. Because unless the NASA data is looked at by a congressional committee, I think we're going to be debating this endlessly, endlessly for the next, you know, five decades. And anybody can respond who wants to. Okay, start. You should start that with Andrew because I, uh, I accidentally cut him off. Ready to I, roll. Um, jumped in. He was just getting into his stuff. Oh, okay. Andrew, are you there? Don't. Yes, I did. I did want to frame a question, maybe after the break. Too. Yeah, we got about two minutes in, in front of the break, so set it mm -hmm. up, and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up when we come back. Okay, maybe I can. Um, so, Doctor Shield, um, you talked about when you were fourteen and you made your own telescope, and I'll I'll ask you directly, what were you looking for? <laughs> uh, actually, I was just to trying left. to learn the subject. Um, as a 14-year-old, I left. knew that I had an enormous learning curve ahead of me because I was interested in basically all technical subjects, like a little boy would be expected to. Did you and, ever? Um, did, did you ever, Rudy? Really, did you ever get an, uh, uh, Andrew Ingalls' book, Amateur Telescope uh, Making? I know the book, the Amateur Telescope Making, yep. by Ingalls, as I recall. Uh, it's the Bible. I, uh, the Bible. <laughs> yes, I know the book, but I didn't own it. I had the other book that was won by um, uh, Alan J. Thompson called Making Your Own Telescope, which uh, was oriented toward building yourself a 16, uh, I'm sorry, a 6-inch F8 reflector telescope, and that's what I built. There's a picture of it on my homepage. Um, I used this many years to explore the skies of the youngster growing up in Chicago. Okay, let's hold it there. My guest this morning, Dr. Rudy Schild, Ron Gerbron, our resident generalist, Andrew Curry, uh, Joe Shaletti, and um, we're going to have a couple others. We're going to try to get hold of Michael Hill. Given that Michael Hill is in touch with folks that uh, claim not to be here, not from here, you know, anywhere but from here. I want to talk to Michael. So if we can uh, get him up on Skype, that would be very useful. You're on the other side of midnight. My name is Richard C. Hoagland. We're talking about what could happen during this beginning official government UFO hearings of the House Subcommittee on Counterintelligence that will be taking place at 10 a.m. Tuesday morning. Eastern Daylight Time. Hopefully, they'll be on C-SPAN. You're on the other side of midnight. We shall return. Time to hit the road. Turn left. a new route. Get ready to turn right.
the other side of midnight.com. Turn right and then talk turn radio right. with pictures on demand. Turn Liberate left. your hyperdimensional time scale and non linearly access over 400 hours of conversation at the cutting edge of science and thought. Join Club 19.5 to get access to exclusive content that fits your interests and time schedule. Filter episodes by guest or subject. Membership costs $9.95 a month, 33 cents a day. Listen while you travel or as an environment to your endeavors. Eight cents an episode, two and a half cents per hour of content. The other side of midnight.com. Go straight on. Keep right and then turn right. Turn right. Get ready to turn left. Turn left. Get ready to turn right. And welcome back, everyone, on this now Sunday night. Saturday night, Sunday morning. You know, that works. Okay. Turn right. It is a little after midnight here in the Land of Enchantment. My guests this morning are Dr. Rudy Schild and Ron Gerbron and Curry and this Joe is where it's and Gilletti. And uh, we're looking for Michael Hill. If Michael Hill can uh, uh, join us, that would be useful. Keith is working on that. So let's go back to Andrew. You were just about to talk about artifacts and hey, my Richard, favorite... Can you hear me? Say again? Can you hear me? This is Michael. Michael, there you are. There you are. Okay. I, I, I just in. <laughs> well, that's the way it's supposed to happen. Okay. Right. I tell you what, let's uh, hold, hold still for a moment. I want Andrew to complete a thought that we'd started on the other side of the break, and then we'll get to you, because I want to I talk to you about First Peoples and contact with uh, ready to family. Turn left. So, Andrew, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Richard. So, the reason why I asked you that question, Dr. Shield, is recently, oh gosh, this is months ago, it might have been last year, but anyways, it was on one of our, what we call our enterprise imaging shows, where we do look at uh, images from space agencies all around the planet, and the things that we think they're revealing about, uh, you know, different planetary bodies in our system, and even... Uh, uh, you know, so-called asteroids, etc. Um, one of the things that I looked up is the profiles of a, a lot of the NASA personnel. So all the people that are doing the robotics and the engineering, and, and a lot of them are very young. The, some of the older men and women are a little more careful with their bios, but the younger ones, almost to a T, not almost to a T, but many of them, uh, b speak of their inspiration to move into, you know, uh, ast astronomy and into NASA because of their of the influence of sci-fi and all the shows they saw, Star Trek, et cetera, et cetera. So, you, you know, when when Joe, you were talking about if this, um, you know, is the government going to lie again? I don't know if they're going to be able to because I think. You know, the populace has been prepared. Oh, let me long... interrupt. Andrew, this is yes. exactly where I want to go, go because I think we, when I say we, I don't mean just this show. I mean all of us all over the planet for all these decades who wanted the truth on this. We now have a vehicle. We now have a focal point. We have a official U.S. government congressional committee. If that does not become the target, of every activist who wants science, honesty, and political, you know, uh, adulthood on this subject, then I don't know when we would ever have a better chance. So go for what it is you'd like to see happen. 
you mean to me, Richard? Yes, you mean yes, all Andrew, of Andrew. Oh, well, I mean, for, for me, so for our feeling is, um, you know, and you, you guys are acknowledging something, you know, some sort of presence. And I line up a, a lot more with that. This presence or this, the, the, these beings might be a lot closer <laughs> in our celestial neighborhood than we might realize. Um, and, you know, this has got to do with what we believe we're seeing ruins on the moon and on Mars and on, you know, like I say, on, on other, you know, other planetary bodies in our system. And again, we can't total, we can't prove that until we complete, until we get there and go and analyze it. It's like any, any smart scientist, right? But the images are becoming more and more clear. They're becoming tantalizingly blatant and, it's, it's not just geometric st structure anymore. It's not just geometry we're seeing. What we're seeing is artwork. Like Mars, I, okay, it's, it's, it's ruins. Like, you know, we were talking about Curiosity and, and that, that rover is currently in Gale Crater. And it's an unbelievable place. I mean, if it was just geology, it's amazing. But what we've seen is, well, what we think we're seeing is, is our, our massive pyramids, uh, uh, temples, uh, destroyed uh, uh, statuary. I mean, we just, I mean, we've seen so much. And, and, and you know, many people would say, oh, you're crazy. You're just projecting. <laughs> well, we're acknowledging here that we, that there's UFOs. So why can't they be in our celestial backyard just literally beside us? So we would like to see the government say, hey, we do think we might be seeing something odd, you know, on Mars. And we have to take this seriously. So that's where I'd like to see it happen. Rudy, let me ask you a, 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 a dumb mainstream question, okay? When a, when a Muamua appeared in 2017, in October, and and then this bizarre, from most perspectives, mainstream perspectives, alien artifact theory kind of emerged okay, here we go. Uh, at Harvard, was there any discussion among Get ready to ordinary left. curious scientists? Like, what turn the hell left. could this... Could this incredibly unlikely possibility actually ready, is there data to support it did anybody evidence any normal scientific curiosity right. actually the answer is no with the exception that Get there ready, was once right. a comment in the group that is studying turn star right. formation that was just that was a, a toss-off remark about, oh yes, if that odd object uh, um, uh, is uh, actually artificial, then uh, we've got neighbors after all. If something was just tossed off and uh, never taken up, and there was no serious discussion as against anything else that uh, was a scientific curiosity that could be understood. understood. Maxwell's equations or with the relativity theory, Keep right there it was laid out before right. your eyes and investigated very carefully. So, um, you would have to say exit that right. by and large it was not taken seriously Get or ready to turn right. considered a vital uh, object of discussion for astronomy as a whole. It was, it was, it, it was right. in my mind, I remember at the time, from the get-go, oh, we're pretending that uh, we think we know what it could be as uh, it's extreme a, um, an explanation as it was. Uh, I think it's probably going to turn out to be something much simpler, but um, um, uh, nothing has much emerged, but there has really been no more conversation other than that. So let's just Keep say right, I only experienced right. uh, a very, very minor amount of discussion. Exit right. Uh, I'd like to throw in a comment. The next time you hear someone in, dis in a discussion like that say that, oh, it's probably something much simpler, you know, and to dismiss the subject, just pop up right then and say, Keep left. oh, like what? <laughs> well, um, Try that. See what happens. Uh, I mean, it's harmless. Well, the, hydro, the hydrogen ice idea, which is nuts, went so far because there's a vacuum about any other real possibilities. It's like the community actually entertained the most absurd real-world models because they can't bring themselves to 
go where Loeb has gone. Yeah, they'll fight to the death to preserve something that's just an assumption. So I take it, Rudy, that, you know, postcards from the edge, even after, you know, official hearings, of course, they haven't actually begun yet, so we'll have to kind of watch this. The feeling in academia <clears throat> is this is a subject that you would never handle with a 20-foot uh, pole. Well, I would say quite that way, but uh, I would wager a graduate student's career. Ah. In other words, I wouldn't say to a graduate student, this is really the most important thing and should be investigated, because um, I would consider that there's too much possibility that there is some kind of a silly explanation, like there is some object that occasionally orbits uh, the sun and eclipses this thing, or there is something going on uh, with some kind of gravitational lens that obscures it occasionally, or that there is just a dust cloud of some kind that has obscured it uh, and does it semi-periodically. Uh, uh, and, uh, so wait, wait, are you talking about Tabby's star or Oumuamua? Uh, Oumuamua. Yeah, well, Oumuamua was a single object that whipped around the sun before they could really marshal any decent resources because it was so un unresponsive. It was a point of light. It was always a spectroscopic uh, analysis. And the thing that was so mysterious was after it passed around the sun, it accelerated. And of course, that generated all kinds of bizarre explanations, including lobes about solar sails. What are your thoughts about that? Um, so, in fact, that's what I was talking about. Keep that, right, um, and then um, exit this right. This could be um, uh, a combination. I, I, I'm imagining that whereas exit right. solar sails came up, I think that there that is a possibility, but the universe of other possibilities is to me so great and quite frankly i don't think it's very Keep interesting left. richard can i can i um yeah sure here? by all means yeah yeah I, I this is sort of a general question to anybody here what would be more dangerous um to discuss and take seriously um ufos in the presence of ets from somewhere you know far far away or local ruins and where that may have originated and come from. What's a more dangerous precedent-setting situation? Or are they on equal footing? Meaning I local, lo local destruction, destruction, meaning yeah, like ruins yeah, on the I think that question was directed to you, Rudy, in terms of imminent technological stupidity, like, you know, World War Three, that kind of nonsense. Yes, uh, you know, I'm a bad person to talk about this because right. I, my mind just right. doesn't go to, to these areas so much. I, I have, I understand, I've, I've uh, stretched my, uh, my credentials and uh, uh, tried to understand the universe that enables consciousness. And I consider that to be um, very fruitful and very important. But I have seen so many other little anomalous out. things come and go, um, often without being satisfactorily resolved. Um, but as here, having one stated possible explanation, which everybody then focuses on, but when it ever gets then resolved that that's not possible, then interest usually just typically evaporates or withers away because you start to realize that, okay, it's not the first thing you would think of, but there are so many other things that you could think of that um, this is futile. It's not... Well, wait, 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 wait. The, 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 let, me, let me do this and then you can jump in. The problem with the Mua Mua, Rudy, was okay. not only did we see key numbers of the torsion Finding field in Never its mind. very celestial trajectory, which okay. could not happen by accident. I mean, the rerouting. probability is incredibly low. 
but the very anomalous motion okay. of Never its mind. behavior after it route. passed the sun, remember the unusual accelerations, which were interpreted by the mainstream as cometary outgassing, except there was never any outgassing ever observed, even by the Keck. Actually, um, uh, I would have to say that you called my bluff here. I'm really underinformed about the Bula Bula. Oh, my, and, uh, uh, Bula Bula, I've got to send you more data. This is an area uh, of your education I, I that's been woefully... I suppose if you like, but I would re much rather talk about consciousness and about the destruction of matter in the universe. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do this tonight. I'll do this in the, yeah. the next uh, several weeks or whatever. Tonight, I want to talk about consciousness in terms of the hearings because it's the only chance we have to raise the consciousness of the audience on this subject. So how do we, how, how do, we do that? Well, there's another place. It's Canada, Richard. You know. Canada? Canada, as in... I've heard uh, of it. It's somewhere up north, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you, Michael? I, I hate to say, but can I jump in because... Yeah, Michael. No, no, no. I wanted you to... <clears throat> Let me give you a little background. Michael Hill is a musician, a hell of a good musician. He's played with some of the greats. He also has relatives that are not from here. He's been in contact with them. Uh, there's a lot of controversial material. But I'm kind of wondering, Michael, from your sources, your contacts, is there any interest on the part of the family in what's Reconceive. going to happen on Tuesday in Washington. Rerouted. They're they're in charge. John okay. Alexander. Let's find a new um, route. They asked some are, if you and Never Robert mind. Bigelow. I'll find a new route. A Finding a new route. To Re the intelligence behind the phenomenon that you've been studying and finding. He said yes. Keep left. We have found Never out mind. that it's more complex than we could have ever okay. imagined. Let's and find it's a new route. In charge, and they said we have now we know we've come across the trickster. The trickster, and first of all, the skinwalker is a Native American Indian concept as well. They would see these orbs of light come down and they would take on physical, biological life form, whether it was a giant wolf. Michael, 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 for people that have never heard you before, give me a two or three minute pricey on your relationship to off-worlders, to the Anunnaki, and to the technologies that you've been working on that are part of that contact. Right on. Well, it all started when I started experiencing and witnessing and recording them over Lake Erie. Some of my footage went viral on my YouTube channel, has over 5 million views now. That brought the history channel to me. They ended up doing a whole show on my story. This and, is like uh, decades ago? Two, 2008 is when it aired. Okay. Um, and in this episode, they flew me to Boston. A uh, Harvard professor, David Sistrom, revealed on this show, I don't have normal human blood. That was a shock to me, by the way. I was like, wait a minute. This isn't a TV show anymore. What uh, What are you talking about? Is there something I should worry about? And he said, what do you think unknown means? Kind of not very nice about it. And, um, I, you know... No, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's not skip over this quickly. Mm -hmm. For this television show, which was going to feature your camera observations of UFOs mm -hmm. over Lake Erie. The, mm -hmm. the television production company brought you to Boston and they had you agree to certain genetic medical tests to reveal what? Um, they had found another contactee that was um, in Washington and he was a Marine and they found this blood anomaly. Well, they didn't even know that at first. What they knew is they interviewed him two weeks before me and he had the same footage of these orbs of light that are showing up worldwide right now. What's um, the anomaly? What uh, the anomaly is an in, well, let me say what they found. The anomaly was an enzyme called creatine kinase. The normal amount of it in blood is 25 parts per liter of blood. In Terrell, it was around 2,000, and um, so there's no medical reason though. Usually. Creatine kinase brings oxygen into the bloodstream to facilitate healing. So if you ripped a muscle or had a heart attack, it can jump up to about 
300 parts per liter of blood tops. That's because it's bringing oxygen into the bloodstream to facilitate Let's healing. And what I've learned is how much oxygen you have in your body equates to how much chi or prana that you're holding, electricity at a cellular level. So they thought, well, isn't it weird that these two guys have the exact same footage, same story of contact, Turn but left. they found he had this blood anomaly. So that's why they flew us both to Boston. Turn they left. Thought, Wouldn't it be weird if they both have the same unknown blood anomaly? Sure enough, that's what the Harvard professor found, but I was at 2,100 parts per liter of blood with absolutely no health reasons why it should be there. He said, if I had to guess, because we just don't know, I would think that there's some kind of virus at work that is unknown to mankind that is tricking your brain and releasing these massive amounts of creatine kinase. It's kind of like mitochloridians in the Star Wars, ain't it? That's interesting. Mm. Um, but uh, So that show aired in 2008, March. In the summer of 2008, I went to this festival, and I was met by these beings. First of all, they said, we heard you've been filming us over, over Lake Erie. <laughs> okay. Um, they said, we were Keep once left. known in your past as the Anunnaki, and you were once known in your past as Ia Inki, the water bearer. Well, none of this made any sense to me because there was no ancient aliens on TV. Keep I left. didn't even know what a water bearer was, but now I can. We'll talk about that, Richard. Uh, you <laughs> know, they look like you with them they've actually they look they look totally human that's what's yes. so amazing you're well, totally it is human. but you know what if they can become a giant wolf or a giant deer i'm sure they can they can appear as whatever they want to appear as because this is the same intelligence behind the and this is you know bigelow aerospace contacted me Lowe's bigelow aerospace advanced space studies bats and they said we know you're in contact with the real thing because we've been studying it over the Skinwalker Ranch for a very long time. And uh, we'd like to talk to you, because how come you're having such a different experience? They call it coming up against the trickster as poltergeist activity. This was multidimensional intelligence, and it proved to them it was one step, step ahead of them all the time. How come we had about? no Take problem with it whatsoever? I mean, Finding nothing but poltergeist activity. I'll find a new rerouting. Kind of scary, but you have been given this course of study, cosmic harmonious frequencies, and knowledge that has led to, you know, with your help, Richard, um, proof that they've given me technology that opens a portal through the fabric of space time and brings photonic light energy through that one thing, it will resurrect dead water into living water with such increase of energy it's mind-blowing and i have all the gdb photography i've shared it all on my page there on your show tonight yeah you got I you got a, a bunch of the microscopic uh Keep water uh, experiments from, from uh beverly and it yes. definitely shows that when you expose ordinary water rudy Turn to right. this technology that came to him from his contacts it does things to water that you can measure Mm -hmm. In fact, well, it does it most effectively. My friend, Dr. Rubik, who's been measuring anomalous water signatures for decades, she said she'd never seen a technology produce this effect in such a short period of time as in Michael's, uh, shall we say, gifted technology. I love the name you came up with, Richard, the uh, magical hyperdimensional energy disk. <laughs> well, they <laughs> are. We are <laughs> Um, but here's the deal. Yes, you can get information right now because you know who the United States government is actually funding is uh, the University of Ottawa. And I, this is my work that um, they're bringing Ready to what they call star knowledge because they came and filmed us and, you know, at a star knowledge conference. Hey, Rudy, Rudy, are you paying yeah, attention? Are you paying attention? Yes, I, fact, I right. can't explain this. Um, but it's because I'm so ill-informed or under-informed right. then about uh, right. what the uh, Ottawa government is is doing with their program. Turn uh, right. It's all news to me. 
Here's because it's brand new. Um, we filmed the show for the um, Canadian Public Corporation. I can give everyone a link to that show. I'm involved with this movement. And um, what it is is revealing thousands of years of contact with star beings with Native American First Nations. And um, I'm a part of that movement. I am Seneca Iroquois, and I was brought in as a mound builder's representative with the major elders, uh, chiefs, and grandmothers of the First Nations. And um, like Clifford McCoy. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me, let me get something straight. Hmm. Are you telling me that this is an accredited course at the University in Ottawa that's going to yeah, talk but... about the connection between human beings <clears throat> and ancient family amid the stars? Yes, yes, exactly. And you can prove this. Just go to Google right now and type in Star Knowledge and University of Ottawa. But what's more important is when you bring that up, go and look who's funding go straight it. on. It's the United States government. The news ain't going to come from uh, the Congress, they don't know, man. They, you know, this is on a need to know. Well, wait, 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 wait. The Congress is part of the U.S. government the last time I looked. Okay. Yeah, but they don't know shit. Right. That's because they didn't want to know. Now. Uh, no, you know what? They, it was on a need to know basis. As you know, many presidents uh, don't even work Turn great. left. They didn't need to know. Um, who you would want to talk to would be the people in charge of these reverse engineering technology programs, like the head of the NSA, you know, which that's what happened after the, the uh, meeting the Anunnaki. I was contacted by the head of the NSA Go straight on. remote viewers, which is also the reverse engineering division. And they brought me into the fold. What I'm gonna do tonight is I can follow this. I'm gonna, you know, Get go ready to TV. turn right. Because here's the deal. He died. We went up against the transhumanist in uh, 2012. And he died the next year because Turned he said right. we pissed off the wrong people. These are the George Guidestones people, right? Mm. But um, he also said at the end of his life, because I was under tutorship by the actual reverse engineering. I'll tell you what, Michael, are, we're at the bottom you know, of the hour. This is fascinating. It, it will grade into what I want to talk about in the last half hour. Don't anybody go anywhere. My guests are staying exactly where they are. Keep and they range right. from Harvard astrophysics to someone who has met members of the E.T. family making some very interesting things happen. You're on the other side of midnight. My name is Richard C. Hoagland on this Those Saturday night, on. Sunday morning, May 14th and 15th, 2022. We shall return. other side of midnight.com talk radio with pictures on demand liberate your hyperdimensional time scale and non-linearly access over 400 hours of conversation at the cutting edge of science and thought join club 19.5 to get access to exclusive content that fits your interests and time schedule Filter episodes by guest or subject. Membership costs $9.95 a month, 33 cents a day. Talk radio with pictures on demand. The other side of midnight.com. straight on and welcome back everyone last half hour to go on this Saturday night Sunday morning Rudy we were we were talking to you about the idea that what's really at focus in this whole exercise is the beginning of a discussion of an extraterrestrial technology 
which can change anything in our reality. How long do you think the, the reality behind all these abductions, all these, I, I actually hate that, that word. I think contact is much more appropriate. I don't think Exit these are now. straightforward abductions like, like you know, the, the Oxford Dictionary would describe. I think there's something much more interesting going on. And I get the feeling that we're on the, on the verge of kind of the next chapter. What do you think? Uh, so Turn I left. agree with you, Richard. There is that feeling in the air right now. And um, I believe that this is an example of what you might call science, humanity, progressing funeral by funeral. Oh, the um, old Max, the old Max Planck thing. Turn left. He was asked one time, our science ever made progress? He said, only when the old farts die. Uh, so, in fact, that feeling <laughs> was happening. I was very interested in hearing Mike speak because um, Get ready to I am turn aligned left. with a Native American community turn who left. has declared me as their uh, one of their honorary Sorry. grandfathers. Oh, congratulations. And so they are right very up. open to the concept of Sasquatch. Uh, they uh, he, he is in their tradition. He exists in their tradition, I should say. And also, they are very open by visit. Uh, they are very open as a tribe to visits by what they describe as the star people. That is the extraterrestrials. And so um, the kinds of things that we are talking about here tonight are um, also in the Native American community's tradition. Uh, if you're wanting to know uh, where I speak of, it's really a Cherokee-aligned group of uh, Native Americans that meet in Lincoln, Vermont, uh, at the Sunray Peace Village. And um, uh, there has been a, um, uh, um, a great deal of interest in the extraterrestrial question uh, there. Um, people know that I'm interested in it and offer me their stories about things that have happened to them which uh, don't have a good explanation uh, that they can consider satisfactory. And uh, we just kind of like to talk and work it out. So I'm very sympathetic to this direction of uh, the conversation. Ah. Well, obviously, right we've got to get We're you guys to exchange. Meeting, you know? We need you guys to exchange contact info uh, after the show. Yeah, so, the so, so when the show ends, don't anybody leave. Remember, we have this after party, so everybody stay exactly where you are, and we'll just all exchange emails and make sure that the next step in this progress can go forward. Tell us more about this University of Ottawa thing, Michael, because this is a major breakthrough. I mean, Rudy was just saying at the top of the show. If a major university would do something like this, then you'd have the follow-on effect. Well, yeah. apparently, it's happening. You know, I named it, Richard. I was talking to the head producer from the Canadian Public Corporation, and he said, what do you, uh, what do you think we should name this movement? I said, well, you met us at a Star Knowledge Conference. <laughs> so it became the uh, Star Knowledge Symposium, so, or Symposia. Um, so what they're doing is they're teaching star knowledge. They're teaching now at the University of Ottawa um, things that we've learned from thousands of years of contact with star it. beams. But on every solstice and equinox, you will be able to go to a big powwow at the uh, university and meet with elders and meet with uh, us rainbow warriors and um, learn from us of the new physics and how to uh, resurrect your water, you know? Um, you know, by the way, go back to when I met the Anunnaki and they said you were once known as the water bearer. Time to hit the That made no sense to me now whatsoever. <laughs> but now I'm, I can look someone in the eye and go, you know what, I am the water bearer. Would you like to see the scientific NASA data, you know? But um, so what's going on is, you know, with my work with the Native American Indian First Nations, I've begun work with Mitchell Hedges, Crystal Skull. So um, I'm right. bringing it to all the sacred sites of Swan Lock, the hidden That's histories right. of right. these locations. And um, so right. they know all this because they met us, Get ready. the Star Dollar family. Right. Um, and uh, this has also now become using the Mitchell 
such as Crystal Skull, in our right. mission for, with Signals in Space. And uh, that's, I've been doing the work just over the last week, Richard, here, with, you know, the transmitter and everything to get into that. Right. But um, it's coming back in about a week or two. Um, we're working out the time frame right now. I'll be spending four days Turn with right. Mitchell Hedges' Crystal Skull. And the deal is that they want to bring us elders over there um, to start going along uh, sacred sites and bringing the skull there along a very specific latitude line on this planet. It's 51.428. <laughs> I'm going to go through some info. 51.428 is second. one seventh away around the circle. Let's take a circle 360. Exit divided now. by 7, it's 51.428. Graham Hancock has a side angle of the pyramid at 51.86. I was just now we say know, that. Yeah, now we know, though, it's eight-sided, and those eight sides only show themselves on the surface. Um, but anyhow, uh, so I'm thinking, well, there's got to be another angle. It can't be just one angle if there's eight sides. And the voice, as I was led by them to understand 51.428. And... Um, and uh, they said subtract your 51.428 from the uh, side angle Graham Hancock has of you know, 51.86, and it's 432. They took the covenant. It would have to be needed to encode, and they told me that's the true Ark of the Covenant. It's an Ark. It's one seventh way around. I think this ties in with 19.5, Richard, because I think it's showing the... It does, it does. By the way, you know you know that A. Berry is located one-seventh away from the pole on this measurement, and A. Berry is a miniature version, according to uh, some work we did years ago of Sidonia. Yes, indeed. 51.4228 runs right through A. Berry, Stonehenge, all, all these sacred sites, mm. mounds, structures are all dotted. Not only that, though, people have wondered how come the crop circles are always showing up there. Well, they're dotting 51.428, which is the seven-pointed star, which is, look at the Cherokee's symbol for their tribe. It's a seven-pointed star. Oh, let me These ask Rudy a question. Uh, just triggered a memory here. Rudy, have you ever been intrigued with the complexity and mathematical layerings of, of so-called crop circles and wondered who was really doing them? Um, the problem there is that uh, there are uh, groups of um, tractor owners Keep with GPS-guided right. tractors right. Uh, that can turn one out uh, with no difficulty. But at the same time, there seem to be some that are truly of extra, uh, uh, some kind of ET-related origin. And there are some people who uh, can predict that... Uh, uh, a crop circle will, will appear in the morning, and, uh, um, and there it is the next day. So, um, hey, Michael, go straight yeah, tell, 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 tell Rudy your crop circle story. Um, they started using crop circles to Get communicate cosmic harmonious frequencies and 369 Tesla technology. That's where that was led to the uh, magical Turn hyperdimensional right. energy disk. Um, so, they told me I was known as the uh, Inky, the water bearer. So, that was in 2008, my first meeting. And as I said, that, that didn't mean anything. So, I said, you know what, you are who you say you are, and I am who you say I am. I actually, I think I, it's in my list of pictures on there. That is a seven-pointed star, and at the end of each star, you'll see a row that's like dot, dot, zero, dot, 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 zero. Then the next one is totally different. Well, that's ASCII binary code, which we told them, March 11th, 1968, the government put out Go all digital on. communication will be ASCII binary code. Um, I know that because that's my birthday. <laughs> but, um... Okay. So, in, written in ASCII binary code around the seven-pointed star, and this is Ia space ink, exactly what I told them to encode. So that, that crop circle became very important to me, and it was the 
beginning of our communication. I'm, I don't call them crop circles now, I call them crop communications. Because what nine, eight, nine, Turn left. Your, your items. Ah, cool. Hey, By Mike, the way, I want to hear something. Go ahead. Michael, it's Ed, Andrew here. Nice, nice to meet you. I think we met my bed before. Yeah, look, Michael, you know, it's funny. Um, um, Dr. Schildes, um, off the top, spoke about, you know, human consciousness and, and how it's really entwined with, you know, a co-creation maybe of our reality. And isn't in this whole scenario we're discussing, especially what you just touched on there, where you requested something and it manifested. And in that, and maybe in a subtext in these hearings, could we be looking at a cautionary tale? And Richard, you might want to relate the movie Forbidden Planet and how that torsion physics became a very dangerous, I mean, in, in, in a science fiction realm, became a very dangerous um, uh, toy for humanity because we weren't, at least in that film, uh, I don't know. Well, it was the whole MacGuffin of a collaboration in 1956 of all the major studios, Disney and MGM, and the best artists and the best, you know, uh, they got extraordinary music from the that you know man and wife team. It was it was first cabin all the way, and it carried over and over and over again this subliminal etched out in the mathematics of the plot and of the action hyperdimensional connection over and over and over again, including the idea that the reason that this monster could be kept alive after the civilization was gone is that they tried to basically penetrate the consciousness barrier so that whatever they imagined, they could whip to any point on the planet at, you know, exceeding the speed of light. So they, basically it was the uh, monsters from the id was how the MacGuffin in the in Forbidden Planet was explained. It was the ultimate savage of, of the evolution of the Krell from savagery up to space that got them in the end because the the technology unleashed all the hidden demons in their minds that had no feedback loop, had no control, and so they wound up with their consciousness using their technology to inadvertently destroy themselves. That was the cautionary tale of Forbidden Planet. This technology is not useful for humans because it will destroy us. That's what I learned from the elite because I was, like I said, I was brought in to the reverse engineering team and they brought me before uh, the elitist and they said why this subject has been kept from humanity is unlimited free energy. Said that if they know that there's other intelligences and people, that the next question is, well, how they get them to be? And they said, you don't even need alien intervention. Um, people like Tesla, you know, I figured it out. And, um, but this, they don't trust humanity with this because they said it's truly unlimited, it's truly free, and it's truly energy. Well, so, in this in this solar system, I've proven it destroys entire planets. So Forbidden Planet was a cautionary tale at a time when this was poised, Rudy, on the edge of either going public or staying secret. And the overwhelming vote was, at all costs, it must stay secret because it will ultimately wind up killing the human species if it's allowed to run free. Well, at the right, at the right time, it's not. They said that's the problem. Is this is truly Pandora's box, unlimited free energy. Because they asked me, these elitists, they said, um, what do you think a person that would stone a woman to death in the middle of a village because she was rumored to be having an affair, what do you think that they're going to do with their unlimited free energy? Well, look at what just happened in, 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 uh, in you know, in, in Buffalo. In Buffalo, just, just a few hours ago. Imagine if the guy, instead of having an assault rifle, he had a hyperdimensional, you know, nuke in his backpack. Yes. They said a planet has to be at a certain frequency level even before, because if, if we're not evolved enough for unlimited free technology, we'll self-implode. And that's what the Anunnaki, by the way... Okay, that's the one I don't believe. Oh, that's okay. the one I do believe. Go ahead, uh, Ron. No, the, Go ahead. 
Yeah, I don't, this, this bit about, well, we're just not ready for this. We can't handle this. This is all. Uh, that I told him, I said, listen, I said, we're all in agreement that there's a higher intelligence here. Exit um, now. Let's talk to them. I don't want to talk to Congress. Let's talk to the ones that maybe got this phase of evolution a million years ago right. and learn no, how to get higher it. Different. Yeah, well, higher or different. You know, it's, it's uh, they, uh, I don't think anybody assembled here tonight, and probably most of the audience, uh, thinks other than that they've been around, people from Turn elsewhere right. have been around for a long time, and Absolutely. they're not doing a lot of, they're not doing a lot of overt damage. They may be doing an awful lot of, Turn uh, left. under the surface damage. I was going to say, you have no idea, Ron, 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 the other yeah, day when okay. I was trying to get Bassett to talk about politics, is he's going to be on tomorrow night to talk about the, the, the kind of mechanics of how this, you know, hearing is going to unfold and how we can interact with it. He mm -hmm. refuses to even broach the idea, Rudy, Go Joe, on. Ron, Andrew, Michael, that ETs, at least one group, do not have our best interests at heart and have worked very hard for very long to keep us down on the farm and by throwing all kinds of fear porn in front of potential changes Keep in that left. paradigm. And then Meaning what up. happens next week and beyond, they're trying to limit turn communication, left. which we're never supposed to have because it will change us from a, you know, subjected uh, species to one that's liberated. Uh, I, I agree with you completely on that. I don't know what everybody else thinks. But this is like that, uh, stand, that uh, apocryphal story of hell where uh, everybody's in their own little uh, world to torture them appropriately, and yet the door is open. It's not locked. Anytime they can walk out of it. I mean, that's the, uh, you know, it's the same kind of metaphor because I don't buy this stuff. They, this is all, con these are all control mechanisms, <clears throat> control mechanism phrases. And uh, I, that's why I get quiet when these things come along, because I get, it gets tiresome. I don't care what kind of uniform they're wearing or any of that other stuff. If they're, uh, well, what about just looking at a better way of doing it, where unlimited free energy can be revealed to a planet that's been prepared properly, and don't don't go into freak out over it, because that's what the Well, how do we know it's unlimited and free? Maybe it's just a different set of physics with its own rules and regulations you know, that's, well, you know uh, what I mean, i've just proven that yeah i've brought an unlimited free energy device proven that i'm bringing through photonic light energy from another can dimension I it, can i power my phone with it sure. this is I'm, I'm, I'm not the, right i'm not the, give me a I'm minute not, okay <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not being totally facetious here it's just that that's that's where it always stops. Oh, okay, guys, guys, here. guys, guys, guys. Oh, when did I lose control of my show? Um, we got about 10 minutes. I want to make sure we cover in terms of why we should care. We now have this opportunity, this incredibly brief, fleeting opportunity. UFOs, UAPs, bizarre things that go bump of the night that have baffled U.S. Navy fighter pilots are going to be appearing on national global television what is it we can do, guys, specifically uh, addressed now to Rudy and to Joe, to make the hearings go in the direction that we want them to go, which is everything is on the, uh, it's on the table? My concern is that uh, Congress is just filled with lobbyists. They're, they're bought and paid for by the military-industrial complex and big pharma. Uh, the military-industrial complex is booming right now, selling arms to Ukraine and and uh, and all of that good stuff. Oil is at an all-time high. Uh, as we all know, the old school days of Majestic 12, it's no longer military that's controlling this information. It's now the military-industrial complex and big corporations uh, and aerospace corporations and oil companies uh, who have no interest – and releasing this free energy that some of your guests were just speaking about, uh, I see. I, I'm just Not very concerned. Them. I'm just very concerned about um, Congress is bought and paid for by lobbyists. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, ad admitting everything you said up to now is 100 percent correct. Okay, why would these hearings be poised 
where they are unless somewhere at some level someone wants this next level of disclosure and it cannot be controlled. That's why I find it I, kind of amusing. That's why I'm here, Richard. You know, the, the head of the reverse engineering division of the NSA, I have so much learning material. I have e-books. I have correspondences. And at the end of his life, he said, I want you to release this to everyone because the time for secrecy is over and release everything that you've, all the learning material that you've learned over the years of my work with them um, to release it to the world. And it's already done. You don't have to wait. Go to Team Inky on Facebook. Go to the file section. Go to the writings of A.R. Borden as well. And because we, me and the team members realized, you know what, I had – a certain batch of learning material from them. Someone else had another batch. We, we said we better create somewhere where we can make a library of all this data that we have, and that is the writings of A.R. Borden, and all the same information can be found on Team Inky, um, and that is in the file section as well. This is all on what the NSA actually knows from contact and technology transfer programs, specifically with the Anunnaki, and that's what I wanted to say. They, the first thing that they did is set me up with an interview, with, not an interview, a meeting with Bob Dean, sat down and had a two-and-a-half-hour conversation with him over breakfast, just me and him. <clears throat> and um, he was telling me things that was mind-blowing. And uh, Carrie Cassidy from uh, whatever that um, Project, Project Camelot, yep. she came up and she goes, you know, I overheard your conversation. Would you mind me uh, – recording a little bit of it. I was like, yes, please. You know, well, she's released it. I just put that. So this is from mine and Bob's talk. What he said is the Anunnaki met with president Eisenhower in 1954 at Muroc airfield. And that, um, that Eisenhower put together a team, including a Bishop and they wanted someone from all these different walks of life. They were having a, actual meeting with the Anunnaki. Inky side specifically. That's that's what he said. We can get into that more, but that's the video I just sent to you. I'm so I feel blessed that that was documented somehow because um at that point we went into technology transfer programs with the Anunnaki. It was just just decided that uh actually you know that's that's part that's number 10 on your items uh since you can't see what you're looking at excellent, it's excellent. with robert okay. odin yeah man bob uh, you know we became very close and he said he, he's met the anunnaki and um that uh it was really weird actually because he's like a hero of mine when i needed answers spirit led me to bob dean and richard hoagland and um uh, I was standing there. This is at the UFO Congress where this meeting happened. And I had gifted him one of my uh, magical multi, uh, hyperdimensional energy disks. Mm -hmm. It's a mouthful. I'm working on it. And um, <laughs> it was all remarkable. Um, you know, the uh, Star David 19.5. That encoded into one of my quartz crystals. And uh, so I handed it to him. And, you know, he looked at it and he's like, Yes. So I'm standing there and he walks up behind me, puts his arm around me and says to the crowd, this here is one very special man. I was like, what? Oh, like, wow. why is Bob Dean saying this? Like, I was uh, <laughs> embarrassed, you know. But the deal is, um, I am this Native American Indian's chosen ambassador. That's why I brought this forth, this truth. This is disclosure. And it's happening right now in another country. And it's funded by the United States government how about that so they know about this they know the true contact and information well see this fits into America. my model michael and this is where i have real you know shall we say um differences of opinion with Stephen, which will come out mm -hmm. again tomorrow night because i felt for quite a while now that there is a calendar there is a disclosure clock there is a <clears throat> A, a kind of a timekeeping and you can't do this unless the physics the background physics is with you it's kind of like trying to surf when there's no surf and you know and, what Richard? and and that the idea let me finish here the idea that there's a clock tells me that these hearings are not just because somebody Stephen or me or whatever just would not take no for an answer and we kept at it and kept at it and finally grudgingly 
you know, Rubio and others are kind of look. No, there's much bigger things going on. And this is part of, I believe, <clears throat> an orchestrated unfoldment under control to try to maintain some kind of control of a subject that inherently is, I believe, uncontrollable past a certain point. Yes. Yeah. Guys, may I, may I add just one little piece here? Again, back to the consciousness and what Dr. Shield talked about is we almost need like consciousness training wheels to take the next step. And, and it's interesting that both Michael and Dr. Shield are, have been adopted into First Nations cultures. You know, you got to wonder if these ancient cultures somewhere in their, con- in their own consciousness, their sort of group consciousness, in their own anthropomorphic field or something, that they have an understanding of how to begin integration again with this technology, with the raising of consciousness, and a more... Well, there's hypoth- one other thing, Michael, uh, Michael uh, uh, Andrew, let me, let me kind of crib off that. Sure. I don't think it's about changing or patterning or educating consciousness. I think the physics is going to change it automatically. Our job is to channel it in the right direction. Remember, the big picture, it's all about choice. What kind of universe for the next 26,000-year cycle do we want to live in? I I want the golden age. (laughs) Well, I don't think that's that far away. Look, if this frequency shifting is not smooth but in fact is in steps, if it's quantified, you, you could go to bed one night in one physics and wake up the next morning and everything will have changed in terms of frequency, the field, the torsion physics. Okay, watch the time here. I'm watching, I'm watching. Okay. Richard, anyway. I just want to say, because you'll be interested, the Anunnaki told me your clock you're talking about, they said it's a processional cycle. Music. It's it. No, it is. Cycle. It is the processional yes. cycle. Okay. That, that's, um, that's the big clock. We're, we're going to pick this up as the hearings proceed. We'll bring this panel back together uh, in a couple, three weeks. Uh, Rudy, I need to talk to you about your publication, The Physics, Black Holes, Consciousness, all that. Tomorrow night, Steve Bassett is going to lay out a roadmap for how we can intervene in the hearings by giving us the background. Straight on till morning. Good night, everyone. See you tomorrow night.